what do you kind of feel like the overall stamp that this draft class can make on this team? Yeah, the, um, I'd say this draft class was uh, probably one of our most collaborative, just with the coaches and the scouts and everybody together. It's gotten better each year. Last year was great. This year got even better, and and there was so much just talk within the draft room and getting everybody's opinions, and it was really, it, I think I think it felt about as collaborative as it can be, and, and we're really happy about that. You guys go down today, and there are a lot of cornerbacks you know, on, the, on the board. What was it about uh, Luter that, that made him the pick? Yeah, Luter, he, he came on a 30 visit, Matt, and uh, actually Tarek and I talked to him out on the deck, and I remember it because we've been stuck in this draft room for weeks, and there's no sun in there, so I was like, Instead of meeting in an office, let's go stand on the deck in the sun for a while. And, and he was probably the most mature guy we met, probably in the whole process. He's, he's married. He's just he's a man already. And he impressed the, the heck out of me. And I know he impressed you, too. And, and uh, that was probably the thing that stood out with Luter the most. Uh, obviously, the stuff on the field we love, his physicality, his strength, his upside. Junior college guy, he's got a lot of upside still. So yeah, we're real excited about Luter. Yeah, and then part of that evaluation process at the Senior Bowl, he really stood out to us. We thought he separated himself from a lot of different prospects there, um, and it, it made a big impact. Yeah. Definitely going to make him stand out. He's strong. He's very strong. He's very sticky at the Senior Bowl. Um, he fit in very well down there against some of the top competition. Yeah. You say he's been a man already. Is that something that, that you look for? I mean, in terms of maturity, how important does that become when you're looking at him? It is a lot. It's a hard game. It's hard. NFL is really hard, so you got to be – you got to be tough. You got to be mature in order to do this. It's your job. So, we, we found on our team the mature guys do really, really well. You know, the guys that are that are physical, that are tough, do really well, and, and he fit that bill. Yeah, you have to light into what goes into scouting a kicker. I mean, for us, it just looks like <laughs> well, you know, does it go through the uprights? Whatever. What what goes into that, and what led you ultimately to to Jake? Yeah, I thought the kicker questions were done yesterday, <laughs> but yeah, Jake. Um, you know, we really lean on our special teams coaches for that. And I think John and Kyle told you, Brian Schneider loved them, like absolutely loved them, was sold on them. And um, it starts with the scouts during the fall, uh, identifying them and, and giving the coaches a list of, of, of who the, the best kickers are and understanding that Robbie was coming up. And we didn't know what we were going to do with Robbie at the time, so you have to be very thorough. And so they gave him really the top five or so kickers, and he stood out right away. And yeah, throughout the process, for some reason, he didn't go to the Senior Bowl, but he goes to the East-West, and he's the MVP of the East-West, which was probably the most boring game. If you guys watch that, it's like all field goals, and it was terrible, but he stood out. And <laughs> so that tells you a little bit about Jake. But um, really, we lean a lot on our special teams coaches for that, and they did a great job. They were real, real thorough. When it comes to Beal, can you expand on the GTFO factor <laughs> and, the, and just the two-yard burst that he that he showed you guys? Yeah, the GTFO is is something that our R and D group uh, came up with, and really just mimicking what Coach Kasarek wants. And you guys know what the acronym means, or uh, I assume you know. But uh, <laughs> and it's something we look for, and it's something they measure, and and they do a great job of that. And when you when you get to the later rounds and you see guys like him stand out on that, and then it matches up with his forty and, and all the different athletic measurements, it's uh, it's something that separated him from the other guys at that point in the board. Is there, is there a deal? Um, can I go? Yeah, go ahead. Thanks. Um, <laughs> it's clear covering Robbie the last uh, you know six seasons that he's supremely confident. He wants to be out there with with the game on the line. Do you, do you get that sense that, that Moody has that that same I mean that same confidence and how do you sort of assess that? It seems like a very important thing to find out about a kicker. Yeah, I think uh, you're right. That that's something that Robbie had and he was awesome for six years. Like sent him out there and you I mean you thought it was gonna be good and that's hard to replicate. And with Jake, I think that's one of the things that uh, Coach Snyder really liked is the kid just just wasn't scared of anything. He'd go out there and kick it and kick it as hard as he could every time. You can try to replicate that in a practice or something, but that's not real. Um, but you see him make big kicks in games. And I, I referenced the, the East-West, but he made big kicks. At, I think it was Illinois won the game, and, and there's, I think, three game-winning kicks that he had. So those are the things you see. Under pressure, 
he, he did it. And that's past performance is the best predictor of future performance. And, and that's what he's done. We tried to replicate it in a workout, and he did the same thing. And I don't know if they told you the specific incident, but when we uh, worked him out privately, he, he, he did like a last second rush out on the field, field goal. Thing was all messed up. Laces were the wrong way. He didn't care. Kicked it right through the uprights, 50 yards. So those are the things you can do, but you don't really know until they're in that moment. And then part of the evaluation process with the people that we talked to that are inside that building, that was one of the things they emphasized, how this guy has ice in his veins. This guy is as consistent as any position player that they had there. So it's something we felt really good about. Yeah. Mark, what does it do for the scouting process when you have a roster that – you know, it looks like there's virtually a starter at every spot. You know, the depth looks pretty good. Does it change, like, how you approach it and where your eyes go when it comes to evaluating the talent? Yeah, so it doesn't change the process, right? So we're evaluating everyone through the fall as if we're starting the roster from scratch to get the value exactly correct. But as we talk about the players as we go in the winter and then during the April meetings, we, we compare them to the guys on our roster and how they would fit in. Um, so initially, it doesn't change at all, but then we have to be able to clearly communicate what their exact value is a little bit later in the process. So are you basically, in essence, scouting your, your own guys, too, to figure out? Ex exactly. So everyone has a, a specialty that they focus on in those April meetings, um, and that's one of the things that we ask them to do, evaluate our own roster and stack those guys amongst the guys on our roster. When you're kind of stacking those guys, if you're – Say you've got two guys that are pretty close. One guy maybe have more traits, more upside, but may not get it for a year versus a guy who kind of a little more polished, you know what he's getting. Do you have to think about, like, you know, it might be worth going for the guy that might take a year because then we'll have a spot for him? Like, does that factor into it at all? Yeah, but I would say our job is to communicate exactly what you just said. Communicate those differences. Also understand um, who that person is, who can reach their potential, um, and clearly communicate that to – to the assistant GM, to the GM, to the coaching staff, and just help make a good decision. Thanks for including me. Yeah. <laughs> it's really communicating that to John and Kyle and making sure they know the total package and what this player can be now and then in the future. Give them all the information to make the best decision. Yeah. It seemed like two themes that were through a lot of your draft picks were speed and then also guys that were team captains. How important are both of those features? I mean, I know that doesn't mean that they're going to be successful on the field, but those are kind of reoccurring things that we saw. Yeah, yeah. Go. I got it, sure. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, like, the, the, those are two things that are very important to us. The, the 49er, the what it takes to be a successful 49er football player is something that we emphasize. We emphasize it in the preseason. We emphasize it during winter meetings. We emphasize it prior to our April meetings. And those are two things that are extremely important to us. Um, so it is communicated. It's something that they try to gather as much information on as possible, like a captain. But what is a captain? A captain is a, a leader that can connect, can motivate. Um, and so those are things that we're working on as we get into the schools, and that's what we're communicating when we get into those meetings. Talk about the, the collaborative process. I noticed there was a lot of talk about Steve Wilkes. It seemed that he was calling prospects, even letting them know some of the good news. I think yesterday with Jerry Brown. Well, when a new coach does come in, uh, is, is it hard to get him kind of integrated into that whole flow? How did that whole process work? Because it seemed that he was uh, very involved from the get-go. Yeah, it, with Steve, it was real seamless. And we I think we talked about it before. Maybe I talked with you, Matt, about how seamless it was uh, from the get-go, from free agency. And then and then going into the draft, it was the same way. And he just – it was it was like he was part of us right away. And, and he was a, a really smart guy. He communicates exactly what he's looking for. Eyes, hands, hips, and feet. And I've heard that about 30 times, but it, it's the real thing. And because those, but he is—he's—he's uh, he's been uh, about as integral as he could be in, in a, such a short time. And he's not afraid to speak his mind, but he's also real re respectful of everybody else's opinions. And it's been—it's been really good so far. Yeah. Well, he, he obviously has a great cutoff and length and speed. I understand Georgia's got a lot of really good players, but you know. You look at his package and you say, well, how, how come he didn't do more in college? What, what was kind of behind that other than talented roster? Yeah, I think Beal um, really looking more at him for how he fits us. And 
with what they did at Georgia, they had them dropping a lot. They had them doing a lot of different things. And talking to the, the people at Georgia, talking to Kirby Smart, he says the best thing he does is get off the ball, GTFO, and get the quarterback and set the edge. And those are the things we do. As you know, with Chris Casera, you, you see him at practice every day. So those are the things that fit us really well. So we'll, maybe it didn't fit other teams as well, but his skill set fits us really, really well. All right. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.